Welcome to Coloring Paris, a podcast about being an international student in Paris, especially a student of color. Welcome. For today's episode, we are going to have a conversation about race and culture shocks in France. Um, this is a Who very. Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know, it's going to border on identity politics in a way and just fitting in in France. Um, this is also a very timely recording because just yesterday we had our culture night where we spoke about our cultures and our identities and how it fits into the landscape over here. Um, so. No, but really, who are you? Oh, right. Hi. So, uh, my name is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, my name is Adam. Uh, yeah, I'm from Ghana. Uh, hi, I'm Anne, and I'm from India. And <laughs> and I'm Shruti. I'm from India as well. And I'm Tiffany. I'm from the US. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, to start the conversation, um, what are some of the biggest cultural shocks that you experienced after moving to France? <laughs> <laughs> I really want to say toilet paper. <laughs> Go ahead and say it. I mean, um, so I think the biggest struggle for me, especially in the first month since I moved here, was the toilet paper mm. because we used bidets back home and jet sprays, and it's immaculate. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wait. Uh, you, you have to explain this to me. The toilet paper yes. is different. In what way? We no, don't use toilet paper. We don't use toilet paper. Oh, okay, okay, okay. okay. We have, you know, we wash our ass, ass your yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with real water. We actually wash. Yeah, our like we jet spray okay. water on our buttholes and. Okay. okay. I, I was just like, the quality of the toilet paper is what's getting me. Well, no, I, like, toilet paper is not a concept in India. Mm, because okay. yeah we all have like buckets and mugs even with houses that don't have a jet spray we have like buckets and mugs and that's what's considered normal because hold on so if you don't have a jet spray you take a cup fetch water and then you wash the poop from your yep. bum with your hand yep. you use the you wow. use your left hand specifically because you use your right hand to eat yeah. even if you're left-handed See, uh, ambiguous just, territory. Just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just, yeah. You just use the hand you don't use to eat. Yeah. Okay. And then you wash up properly. And then you wash up properly. Yeah. Cool. I mean, I will <laughs> say I had uh, a bidet in Japan and I miss it. I miss it so much. So I understand, but I don't think that was like the biggest hurdle <laughs> of like coming to France. <laughs> You know, for me, I remember, uh, I think three months in, I visited a classmate's house and she had a bidet and I cried <laughs> when I used it because I was so happy <laughs> to yeah, use yeah. a jet spray Yeah, again. I think the first time I used it was at uh, place during Christmas. Oh, oh yeah, uh, yeah, she's had one. It felt amazing. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think when I go back home, apart from my dog, the thing that I would have missed the most is the jet spray. I miss really? heated toilet yeah. seats. Mm. Oh, Japan See, has that's those, a luxury, right? right? It, it, yeah. It's so nice. Like, yeah. you don't understand. Like, I, I didn't realize how, like, coddled I'd been until I sat on a cold toilet seat. <laughs> and I was just like, <laughs> what has my life become? <laughs> I've gone back down. No. <laughs> All right. So, for me, I think the biggest cultural shock, and I wouldn't say this was a shock that happened to me like last year but Mm. the first time I came to Europe was just seeing uh, vehicles stop for me at the zebra crossing okay 
I mean, why are you so polite, bro? Like, why aren't you threatening to run me over? You know, why aren't you honking the fuck out of? <laughs> right, yeah, right, right. I, I, you are actually waiting for me to cross the road, even if even if there's like a red sign. Yeah. And I'm just like, there's like a whole war of politeness going on. I'm like, you please go ahead. You please go ahead. I'm like, please just go ahead. Why are you so polite? <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't go to India because like, I'm the opposite. I'm like, drivers here are so rude. <laughs> no way. But, but you put one foot on the zebra crossing and, and then everyone stop. stops. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh my God, am I the queen of England or what? <laughs> <laughs> But Tiffany, I think you have mm. those sentiments probably because you ride a bicycle. I feel like there is yes. an unspoken yes. war between like <laughs> drivers of cars and bicycles. It's it's a thing. They're I think really, they yeah. are so annoyed every time they see you on the bicycle. I swear to God, like people have tried to splash me. Like those puddles, <laughs> they'll like drive into them trying to like hit me. I'm like oh, I didn't do anything to you. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but you but know, also pedestrians are even worse. They get mad if you're on the sidewalk. And then if you're on the street, the cars are mad at you. you there's no safe place. I mean, pedestrians do technically have the right of, uh, right of way, right yeah. of way. But the only uh, people that don't respect that are the cyclists. Yeah. Honestly, they don't. Also, just look before you step out into the biking lane. You don't cross the street without look, like without not, not looking. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, without looking. Yeah. So I, I, I think I was speaking to someone, and then they told me that Paris has only become um, bicycle friendly in very recent years. Yeah, yes, that in times that past true. it was just for cars and for pedestrians. So I think there's still a lot of work to be done for like you know bikes and stuff like that. Yeah, because because I I hear that in Amsterdam the bikers mm. are much more ruthless. <laughs> Actually, I mean, they have, have they have a separate bike lane everywhere. Okay. Uh, but it doesn't necessarily mean that the bikers are any nicer. Mm. Okay, or, I went to Amsterdam and I understand why they're bitchy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. Because people like people who go visit are just like la di da di da. I'm just gonna walk in the street. I'm like that's no get get on the sidewalk. What are you doing? <laughs> Yeah, so, um, yeah, but, um, I don't know, Tiffany, do you have like any, um, culture shocks since you came? Um, honestly, the biggest thing I think is the food. It's very different, um, compared to what I'm used to eating. I, I really miss rice. There is rice in France. There is rice, yes. Mm, Is there? Like, (laughs) I mean, I have it every day. So do (laughs) Do I. Oh, I miss like Japanese rice. Oh, so I have, right. to, I have to like go to a special store to buy it, and that's kind of mm. annoying. So, mm. and I also remember you have some very strong sentiments about Parisian sushi. It's shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's truth, it is. It's shit. Like it's it's overly sweet. Yeah. Like the sauce is disgusting. I don't know where they got that fish from. I'm not even sure it's fish. <laughs> it's no, just it's no. It's that bad. It's really bad, and it's so overpriced. So overpriced. It's yeah. ridiculous. But for me, the biggest culture shock moving to um, France and Paris is the unnecessary bureaucracy. Mm. And there's, right. my God, it, it's a horrible. It literally took me like almost two months to get a fucking bank account. You got one? Oh, I still I don't have one. Oh my God. Uh, right. Is that because you're American? <laughs> yes. And you have to pay taxes back home? Yep. That's right, because I'm American. Right, right. But it's what, six, almost six months now? Oh no. Yeah. Oh, banking is the one thing. It happened very quickly for me. Right. You had someone take you there. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yes. yeah. And I stuck with Anne, so Yeah, and that's the only reason faster. why we got it done quickly. It's yeah. it's been horrible. The bureaucracy apart from the banking and to like other stuff. So when I came first I was living with this woman from Martinique and then she was telling me how French people like to extend, you know, the period like the time frame for doing things because like they feel like if you get it too quickly you might not value it as much as you would if it takes too long so they try to stretch you they, they are going to stretch you like <laughs> chewing gum like stretch you so that when it comes you actually value it and you'll be like oh my god I was so stressed and now I finally have this and so I'm going to cherish it I feel like I oh feel like it's god. true because I, feel, I can see like I'm too stubborn yeah, for I that I, I want to just burn it to the ground now that I got it I'm just like <laughs> You were a piece of shit. <laughs> it's it's insane. Have you uh, gotten your social security number? Yeah, I did. The permanent I got it. one? No, I haven't. It's so temporary. Yeah. So what about you? Nope. 
Have your documents been accepted? No, not yet. Yeah, yeah. all of my documents have been yeah, accepted same. for like months. Yeah, mm-hmm. same. It's I honestly do not know what is going on. Yeah. I and got my the thing is, either. I want to change because I recently moved addresses. I want to change my address on my social security. Right. And there is nothing on the and I can change my address only if I get a permanent number because only then I can open the Karte Vitale account. Right. And only then I can apply and the other way to do it is to call them up and to call up their English helpline which is never picked up. I've mm. tried yeah. six times. Yeah, no. I mean actually writing letters in French helps because I had an issue with CAF. I okay. had an issue with my name. I just wrote a letter in French and uploaded it and like they got back to me with the change in like three days. Oh, wow. oh that's wow. cool. I was like wow. And they, and they wrote a whole letter saying uh we got your request it has been it has been addressed and now your name has been that next. changed and thank you for uh reaching out to us it was a very polite very beautiful letter i was like thank you so much for changing it <laughs> but is this the 1700s like why are we writing letters next thing they'll be like please send know, this by pigeon I know, like what the hell i know absolutely it, so a yeah. friend of mine he studied in paris for a year before coming back to india mm-hmm. and he started his bank account and they asked him would you like your uh secret code by mail or by sms oh my God, i had a, such a hard time and with that yes by mail or by sms and he was like mail because oh my god you get emails really quickly and <laughs> a month went by and he didn't get anything yeah and one random day he opened his letterbox and the mail was there yeah when they meant mail, mail. they meant mail, <laughs> mail. Yeah. exactly <laughs> It was, it, was it was frustrating. So I remember the same thing after I got, after I finally got my bank account and I got my, my uh, debit card and then I needed the code to the debit card to be able to use it. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then they were like, okay, so we're going to send it to you by mail. I'm like, okay, cool. And so I go home and, <laughs> and I'm waiting for a mail and nothing shows in my email for like two weeks. And so I, I go back to the bank and they're like oh yeah we already sent it by mail I'm like sorry it's not here and they're like oh we meant mail like <laughs> snail mail I'm like oh bro why <laughs> and it took like an extra two weeks for that snail mail to arrive and the crazy thing is I got very impatient waiting for the mail and so there was an option to just switch to your um to switch it to SMS mm-hmm. and I switched it to SMS but I was using Leica and Leica cannot receive SMSs from my bank why? Oh. I have no idea like I have no idea why I think they have contracts with uh, certain banks but that banks. makes like no that? sense it's, it, see it, you should get your SMS regardless of what bank you go to look I was expecting things to actually work <laughs> yeah. But yeah, the thing yeah. is, they work, but they take like forever to actually, you know, yeah. happen. And it's insane. Yeah. But like yeah. that, for me, that was my biggest culture shock. The unnecessary bureaucracy to just take too long to make things happen. And but the insane amount of documentation. I went through a lot to just get my CAF account sorted. Yeah. Um, yeah. But once it has, I mean, now that it has been sorted, yeah. things are much easier. Like I feel like those initial days were pretty tough. In terms of documentation, yeah. the hundreds of documents. Yeah. Mean, yeah. And I feel like when you get here at first, there are so many accounts that you have to create. Yeah. yeah. So many accounts and you are uploading your passport and your visa and your yeah. validation, visa validation thing. And it's much. Hey, at least we don't have to go to uh, the OFI and get another paper stamped anymore. Well, yeah. Because they made yeah. the visa validation <laughs> online and into a 10-minute yeah. Yeah, yeah. process. Yeah. I mean, I think that actually did only take 10 minutes. Yeah, which that was literally very did take 10 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you just pay for the thing online. Yeah, and then, it's, and then you're done. That was good. Yeah, I, I will say apparently it is getting better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's still pretty bad, but it's getting better and yeah. more things have been automated. So thank you, COVID, for that at least. Yeah. Okay, so we are going to go for a quick musical break and we'll be right back with the second part of our conversation. Stay tuned. You're making us cover, don't go erase 
Be like this girl, eh, don't go eat this I got be you love, waiting for your yard But you won't fake love, cause she no G mm, Give me my chacha I go pop to my eye caca This green, he be my friend, be my body My mommy, my love, I wait Be my father Mama, burn up your chacha I go pop to my eye caca This green, he be my friend, be my body My mommy, my love, I wait Be my father, I tell me, yeah Now we just grow, to zoom out Type every day, scroll, zoom out, type every day. Fake love with the top every day, scroll, zoom out, type every day. Then we just scroll, zoom out, type every day, scroll, zoom out, type every day. Fake love with the top every day, scroll, zoom out, type. Mommy the call, mommy the call, you got the call. Where you the scroll? You just be love, where then it's show. But you fool too much self to see the love. Follow the crowd, follow his bow. You the top top, they like black, waiting for like You can't be like still waiting for love How much more you need before you go no say you touch the love You go pop to your heart, caca This queen no be your friend, be your body, your mommy, your lover No, be your father, but still love We just grow, zoom out, type every day Scroll, zoom out the information about the song is going to be in the description of the podcast so you can check out the the singer the you know everything about it you can just check it out so to the second part of our conversation we are talking about race in uh you know france so for those of you who haven't seen the pictures from our recording sessions or the videos we are all people of color we are black brown and um, different shades of black different shades of brown we are not white and so we come into france with that added layer of identity to who we are and it's pretty interesting so we are just going to talk about it for a few minutes and then we will wrap up so um i don't know who wants to go first but okay i will answer as a black person yes. in paris um Overall, I don't feel like there's much hostility towards black. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna rephrase that. I don't <laughs> think that I've experienced much hostility as a black person in France. And I think that comes down to two things. Okay. One, I think I look very American, unfortunately, <laughs> despite all my efforts to stop that. Um, and so people assume that I have money and so they right. tend to treat americans a little bit better honestly yeah, yeah and two i think um I, I find that if i wear things with like african prints or a headscarf or even just like slightly bigger jewelry yeah people tend to treat me differently and mm. even if it's just like a like moving further away while passing on the street or like maybe looking twice when they maybe not have Right. If I was just wearing more like traditional, like black, French muted colors. Yeah. That definitely does happen. Mm, right. But no one's been hostile, which is very good. I feel like coming from America, like where people will like literally shout things at you. It's, <laughs> it's, it's not so bad. Well, okay. So I'm also going to speak to my experiences as a black person in Paris. And I find that fellow black people, who are more integrated into the society than they perceive me to be are more difficult to me than white people. Like, for instance, and I'm going to say this on record, the first time I came to LPI, I was stopped at the entrance, even though white students were let in. And get this, the security guy that stopped me was a black guy. Mm, yeah. The only black security guy, yes, that one, he stopped me because um, he was like, what are you looking for? What are you doing here? And I was like, um, I'm a student and it's my first day, so I am coming to school. And he was like, uh, can you call somebody inside to let you in? And so I had to be like, oh, yeah, you can check with v mm. That's the director of our program. And he called up v asked me my name, had to say my name. He related to like oh yeah he's one of the students let him in before i was let in yeah yeah and yeah. that that wasn't even the only time like i've had some other instances another very bad one was like in a, in a club mm -hmm. just around the corner around bastille mm -hmm. and um i was going 
with a few other white people and one Indian, Indian girl. And we, um, they got in before I did. I got there. I was actually dressed very nicely because I was trying to impress someone. <laughs> so I got there and then, um, the black security guy was like, um, what are you doing here? I'm like, I'm meeting my friends inside. And I was like, which friends? I'm like, they are already in. And I was like, call them. What? So I tried to call, um, I tried to call them and none of them were like picking up the phone. Mm -hmm. And I said something in my local language, like, what kind of nonsense is mm -hmm. this? I'm going back to my house. Mm -hmm. And then he heard me and he was like, what is your name? I said, my name is Adum. He's like, where are you from? I said, Ghana. And then he spoke to me in my language. And I was like, okay. ah, so mm. you, why are you not letting me in? <laughs> and it was like, oh, they was just beating about the bush. It was like, okay, you just go and go. In. And then I went in. So after I was leaving, when we were all mm. leaving, and then he was asking me to pass him five euros. What? Yeah. Right. He was asking me to pass him five euros. I just looked oh. at him, shook my head and left. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Great. <laughs> yeah. Wow. It's, it's, it's like okay. that. It's like that. The, the mm. black people who are more integrated into the society mm. are just making life difficult for other black people that just got here. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And then I was speaking to one of my friends who is, um, doing an MPhil in, um, communication studies. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we were talking about how, like, what the, what the science behind that is, that is. And then he, we were like, he was telling me how there was this theory about how, um, you know, they are trying to, look like the good Negroes to the mm. white people. And so you're trying to look good. And so they make everyone else look bad so that it reflects better, better on, on them. them. Yeah, yeah, so I they're like putting reflects you back down to, to that, uh, that thing we talked about up. yesterday yeah, yeah. regarding that. I mean, we did a play, right, yesterday? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 people trying to look English and feel English. And yeah. More English than English people. Actually. Yeah. So yeah. the book she's talking about is The Blink Cats by Kobna Sechi. It's a Ghanaian play written in 1912, I think. You can check it out. Sorry, can you say the author again? Kobna Sechi. K-O-B-I-N-A-S-E-K-Y-I. Kobna Sechi and The Blink mm -hmm. Cats. What's the question again? What your experiences have been as a brown person in Paris? Yeah, so in terms of race... When I felt hyper aware of my brownness, yeah. I can think of two instances off the top of my head. The first one was when I walked into a supermarket yeah. like during my first week in France. I hadn't bought winter clothes, so I was just wearing a bunch of different layers, not necessarily looking right. my best. Um, and I felt like... I like there were a bunch of different eyes looking at me in the supermarket, <laughs> right? And yeah. even if I just wanted to go browse, uh, somebody would be like, "Bonjour, bonsoir," and even that bonsoir w would feel like, "Bonsoir, We're watching you. I'm watching you." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't shoplift. <laughs> Has anyone had their bags checked while going in and out of yes, shop? Yes, that I has have. also happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah that I has have. happened. <laughs> I have. So I, I kind of have mixed feelings about it because I have seen them stop white people, but I do feel, particularly if the security person is black, I'm like, you're going to stop me. I know <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. yeah. I, I've been stopped. I've been stopped as well. So, but like, yeah, going back to the second instance, when I felt hyper aware of my brownness is when this caretaker at the residence, at the residence that I live in. Yeah. It constantly berates me for not, you know, having my room just spotlessly clean or like not, uh, having enough space in the refrigerator by putting too many things in the shelf or whatever. And get this. The caretaker tells me that you're two, all of you Indians are the same. You don't, you don't clean oh up because gosh. you don't clean up because you get your mums to do all the work for you. And I'm just like, no, do I. Do you want me I, to come fight him? <laughs> <laughs> he keeps saying the same things all the time. At this point, I just like listen to him, um, through one year and then let it out of the other year. But like, yeah. Why haven't you ever said anything back to him? Because I know I would. I just like, I don't have the time to confront. Sometimes I just, I just act annoyed and go away. But then he's like, I'm going to click pictures and send them to Camp Campus France. But you guys know me. You guys yeah, have seen my room. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty clean, right? Yeah. 
he's just he's like il faut aspirer il faut bien aspirer il faut il faut nettoyer la salle de bain whatever 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 I'm like I do that all the time bro I'm not going to do it every day in the morning and the evening I'm going to do that once in a week or like yeah. like like a couple but of days But also why is he going in your room that frequently exactly. That is damn weird I mean he does tell me tell us before he goes into the room cuz he's supposed to check Check what but exactly The state of the room every single day Not every single day once in two weeks or something Yeah, but still like That's damn weird. I know yeah, it's just no. the fault of the residents and whatever. Yeah. But he is I'm like, bro, why are you so worried? Not everyone lives like a spotlessly clean life every single day. People don't have time for that shit. But I've been to your room. It's not dirty. <laughs> it's not. It's not dirty. I've been to your room several times and it's yeah. not at all. Well, anyway. So, Anne, how about you? So, for me personally, from the moment i moved to paris initially i was staying with an indian family so it didn't really affect me that much per se but the one thing that i have noticed in these last 4 or 5 months that i've been here is that when i'm in the middle of a white crowd i get so stressed to even breathe like <laughs> say i i was at a party and everybody was taking food right and they were talking french and i was one of the few brown people there and When I took when I was shaking my food I was like why isn't the food coming faster into my hands because <laughs> I'm not kidding it was very real because I felt like I stood out there right and that they were going to judge mm-hmm. me for just taking food even though I was at the party to eat that mm. food like everybody yeah. else but there was this certain added element of I don't know if it's my personal awkwardness okay for uh being and you know uh among between white people right. or was it just something because obviously they were not friendly to me they didn't know me why would they be friendly to me right but mm. even then i was like my heart started pounding faster i'm like where's the chicken where's the fucking chicken <laughs> <laughs> because i just wanted to get away from there and even yeah. in trains yeah. i think the first week first that i was here I was trying to um I didn't know that you have to press the button for the doors to, to open, open. Yeah. because where I'm from they yeah. open automatically okay yeah. <laughs> yeah. like the like real trains <laughs> France take yeah. it yeah. yeah so they open automatically and I just stood there and then this guy just started yelling you know and uh, like this I think he was trying to say this is how you do it and then mm. he just pressed it and it opened and I was like okay thank you and then I left but I but don't you didn't under- get on the train no I it was to exit sure. the train oh, okay. 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 I thought okay. you were standing on the platform being like ha why is this not opening on its own you just and left the station yeah. I think and my most recent experience was I went to a supermarket hmm. and they had the self checkout Right. Counters right. and I and I remember I did the entire process. I had a lot of things. Yeah. And the kiosk it did not have a slot to put your money in. Okay. And I had cash. I didn't have card. And it wanted me to put the money in. And it kept on. And I had chosen chosen the English option so that I can see all the instructions clearly. Right. And it kept telling me to put the money in the, mm-hmm. you know, machine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No one fucking told me that the. machine in which you put the money is like far away it's yeah. not a part of the kiosk mm-hmm. and i was looking and i was panicking because there are all white people around me just looking at me to get done and there's someone yelling at me like you know why aren't you doing it quickly mm-hmm. and then this one person who was supposed to come and help me who was in the you the know uniform. the the uniform right. even he, i don't know what's it with them and speaking extreme like when i've noticed this that when they're amongst themselves yeah they don't speak very loudly everybody speaks very softly it mm. makes me very concerned about my volume because i speak extremely loudly back at home right but i've realized that as when they're talking to people of color at yeah. least this has been my experience they're a little extra loud i think they're just really annoyed with anyone who doesn't speak french yeah. Yes. And, yeah which is such a weird reaction to have it's like you didn't learn a second language no yeah. or a third language even <laughs> Did like they what? learn a second exactly. language <laughs> like you don't speak my language either why are you getting mad at me yeah 
I think there's they still think that France runs the world. Yeah, yeah. So they they have this uh, unnecessary sense of superiority pride and yeah. superiority right. about being French. Yeah. And I think that can be traced. See, I can understand that you're really proud of your language, but I don't think that should give you a reason to berate other people who are still struggling to learn your language. I mean, if you don't want other people to come into your country, I mean, you clearly don't want to. Mm. Make sure other people don't come into your country. Exactly. Instead, it's you're using. It's kind of too late for that, though. It's no, 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 no. Instead. <laughs> you use a lot of the immigrant population to do me- the menial tasks everywhere. Right. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. like every I think everywhere I've been, the people who clean mm-hmm. are either yep. black or brown. Yep. 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 If it's it, like I've never seen a white, white person. Yeah, yeah. I've never seen a white cleaner. No, actually I did see one. But, you did? Yeah. But she's from like Ukraine or Russia. Of course. Like, she's, she's an immigrant. Like, yeah. Like, Again, she's, she's an, an immigrant. She's an immigrant. Yeah. Okay. But uh, I just want to go back to that point of uh, feeling too conscious about taking food at parties. Yeah. Because yeah. I felt that way for the longest time. I felt like, oh, that Indian girl who's hogging all the food. Yeah. But yeah. then I think over time, I've I've kind of built up the thick skin to just not care. I think it took some time, but I've gotten there. Uh, another thing that I wanted to add was regarding the trains, because I went on this <laughs> long train train trip to the right. south of France. Yeah, and I think that was one of the uh, one of the other culture shocks that I wanted to talk about. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, was just getting on the train and finding it radio silent. Just people, people <laughs> don't talk at all, and I'm just, I, I'm scared to breathe in the train. <laughs> no, but here's the thing: like, so in Japan, it's the exact same. You do not talk on the train. Like, <laughs> old people will glare at you if you talk on the train. <laughs> it's a stereotype. They have posters of like wild animals partying on the train because they used to have foreigners, and people got upset. Um, so for me, it's really normal not to talk on the train. But right. every time I ride the train with my mom, she's just trying to talk to me. And I'm just like, mom, shut up. We're on the train. <laughs> See, oh my, that is so stressful because back home, back in India, I would really look forward to train rides because that's when you would actually get to talk to the people around you. And sometimes we even sing on the trains and trains are noisy and, and that's fine. You know, it is fine. Right. But, but here people just get annoyed. And so you're sitting on this train ride that's supposed to last about eight hours and it's just eight hours of silence and there's yes. people around you that you that you like and you want to spend time with but you can't really talk to them because you're not supposed to talk to text the yeah. them oh my god why would i text you if you're sitting just beside me that's literally what i would do on the train like or you like you sit across from them and then you can like text and then like send like stupid shit back and forth it's hilarious i mean i just i really don't care because personally i attach a lot of nostalgic value to the train rides i had as a child okay back home and we had a ton of train rides right Mm -hmm. and it was always Th- that little eight hour journey that you would use to really bond with your father who are other fathers who are otherwise emotionally distant <laughs> <laughs> what happens I'm, in the train stage I on know. the train <laughs> <laughs> so it's the time that you know fathers tell stories to their kids or like yeah. people get together mm. and eat food and like sing and whatever in Ghana trains are not like something that you mm. get to use every day I had mm. never been on a train in Ghana mm. the trains there were like far away from me yeah. and so public transport is not necessarily a place where you're supposed to be quiet mm. even though after a long day at work going home I would prefer some silence True. but some people actually engage in conversation and mm. for me as a writer when I like trying to improve my writing back then mm. it was good source material because mm. you would listen to frag- fragments of conversations and then be like hmm what's the beginning like what happened before this and how is this going to end and it just keeps your imagination and- Absolutely. And stuff like yeah. that. Okay, guys. So uh, this brings us to the end of our conversation mm-hmm. about race and culture shocks in Paris. We're going for a quick music break and then we'll come back with tips for students. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. I've always known that you were trouble. And now you're rolling with your new model. But she won't love you like I did before. I said we're done You wanna fight But I already won It's like you're shooting With a paper gun You won't get 
with your new honey. It's getting bigger, wish it did for me. resource for today for you to survive as an international student in France and Paris in particular is uh, cop1.fr a website where you can find uh, distributions uh, of food of 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 uh, vêtements clothing clothing <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh bilingual i guess <laughs> 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 Wouldn't you be trilingual at this point? I mean, wait, <laughs> it's more than language. six, right? Yeah. What? You, you, speak you speak more than five or six languages? I yeah. speak five languages, yeah. Whoa! Cool. Yeah. Oh my god, you're <laughs> polyglot. <laughs> I know. <laughs> wait, how many? Wait, you still speak English, French? English, kind of French is my least fluent language. Mm. So, English, Telugu, Tamil, Hindi, and French. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Cool. I'm seriously impressed. Right? I know. Yeah. Anyway, I'll start again. No, you can <laughs> no, 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 just go. No. <laughs> so please tell us about a uh, co-op cope, or yeah. cop or cop. Yeah. However you so cop one dot uh This is the website that you can go to and check out their uh, clothing distributions and grocery distributions. It's actually really amazing. You can find uh, different distributions during the d- during different weeks and in different parts of Paris. Yeah. So you can choose the one that's closest to your residence or the closest to your university or institute. and you can just pop by and they give you a lot of stuff and at the end of each distribution you also get like cake and drinks and you can get to meet other people yeah. and it's pretty cool actually so definitely think that it's something all students who are new to France or new to Paris yeah. should check out just remember to bring your student ID and and also get a bag of your own yeah. cuz That's, that's yeah and also useful. if you are embarrassed to walk into a pharmacy to buy condoms they usually give condoms so yes Do yes they? Yeah. and also that. public service announcement uh for all students who are under the age of 26 contraceptives are absolutely free in so you should definitely <laughs> make use of that if you're over 26 like me you got to buy them yeah. <laughs> but yeah cop also gives um Um, feminine hygiene stuff as well they do. They're, yeah. they're, they're incredible guys so. they're incredible actually yeah. I mean we've we've not uh, shopped for groceries in a while because yes yeah, yeah because we, no we, I buy some other stuff <laughs> I, I mean, mean I buy yeah. meat but yeah. like you know yeah. other stuff yeah. but they're, they're, they're the they cover the basics yeah for yeah. sure so yeah. if you're really on struggle street you, you could live off of them honestly yeah. I, I mean initially I did feel a bit weird but standing in line to get free stuff mm. uh if this is something that you're not used to back home or it yeah. makes you feel a little embarrassed i i really don't think there's any reason to be because it's just an organization that is um standing up for student solidarity and yeah I'd definitely one, something you should check out one thing i have to say is that the people who volunteer and work there are so kind yes mm. i have Absolutely. been to um like free distributions before and they'll treat you like dirt like oh you're poor mm. <laughs> yeah yeah but they're so kind here so don't feel like worried or embarrassed about it like 
they're they're super nice and they often like joke around and like they all uh, yeah like, oh, and they're actually fun to talk to really yeah, yeah. i yeah. had one girl she was just like how many onions and i was just like oh i'm uh, like uh, just give me some and she was like you want the whole box i'm like yes <laughs> <laughs> but apparently she had been asking everybody that question <laughs> right. and i was the first person to say yes so she like stopped what she was doing and like pulled another girl she's like she said yes she'll take all the onions <laughs> <laughs> it was so stupid and you also get to meet other people so yeah pretty yeah, nice you yeah. yeah you meet other students um they're all volunteers i think yeah from you know other schools from other countries you might meet someone from your country someone you know it's really cool and they usually have some really good music playing in the background yes so, most of the time i just show up to dance <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah and it's also useful because i remember there was this one um uh, one student at the Sorbonne mm-hmm. uh she stud- she was studying sociology or something and then she mm. wanted to um interview me for her thesis or whatever and i thought okay. that was pretty interesting you can get contacts from other mm. universities as well yeah. And, yeah okay thanks for that sweetie okay so um it has been another fun episode where we talk about life as international students in paris and most especially as students of color So we are going to sign out and leave you with one more musical break. Keep in mind that the information about the music, the artists, the producers and everything is going to be in the podcast description so you can check them out later. And any book or any piece of art or literature literature that has been mentioned is also going to be credited in the description. Thank you so much for staying with us on this journey. Make sure you like, comment and subscribe and also share with your friends so they can learn about life in France as a foreign student just like you are. Make sure you tune in same time next week. It's been fun. Hoping to see you soon. Ciao ciao. Gostos e o roçar do corpo dela Teus olhos negros e a pele noite Um deslize a cor de o fim E o cacho embaraço nela me tomando ar enfim E o ato eu já nem sei se é fato ou alucinação Agora, e aquele beijo da preta, e aquele cheiro da preta, viu?